Hey, what's going on everybody? Alex here with Freedom Mowers. I hope you all are doing well. Today we are going to be jumping back on our $100 White Outdoors or MTD Zero Turn 54 inch cut. Basically the same thing as a Cub Cadet RZT of this time frame. This is a 2007. So on the last one you guys saw, or if you didn't, go check out the other video, but we had to get this thing up and running. And we were able to do that. We got the engine running pretty good. Had to get the hydros dialed in and adjusted. And we've got all that done. Uh, at this point, we pretty much need to get this thing charging. It would not charge the battery. And we need to have a good charging system since we have electric PTO. And also we've got some deck issues that we need to address and get fixed. It needs some new bearings in the spindles. And it needs a idler uh, for one of the... Um, tensioners for the belt. Let me show y'all kind of where we left off. So last time I was working with the stator and trying to test everything out, asked you guys and had quite a few people actually reply. After I ended the video, I was doing some more testing and I basically melted this thing down. Uh, I believe that it just had a short, I was running it, it just started smoking and uh, I took the flywheel back off and this thing was cooked. Last time we had tested this, grounded one side of my multimeter to the engine block and then we were testing for continuity between this black wire and we were getting continuity. As far as I know, it should not have that. Uh, basically, other than that, it's grounding itself out. This is the kind of stator I'm used to testing and used to dealing with. This is a two wire and I know this came off from a good unit. So we're gonna be testing this out today and I'll just order another one if this does work for the machine that I took it off from. Uh, I did prep some things. The flywheel I had off and I went ahead and cleaned out all the way underneath, checked the magnets. I did also sand the magnet on here uh, for the coils. I did clean up the coils a little bit on the front sides, so make sure we've got a good connection. Uh, I went ahead and cleaned up the whole area where the flywheel is going to be and we should be in pretty good order so I'm going to go ahead and get y'all on the tripod and we're going to get this stuff on and get this thing charging then we're going to move to the deck and hopefully have this thing fully functional and then we are going to go ahead and get it all detailed up and ready to rock and roll now these stators are very easy to install they are just four bolts and they are quarter inch just have to line up line up the uh, little studs basically here and it sits down into a groove once you get it just right so now that's in place nice and tight we'll get those four bolts in I'm just going to get these started by hand you don't want to over tighten these I've got my impact driver on its lowest setting and I am just going to baby these on in I'm just going to kind of snug them, make sure we're even all the way around. And now I'm just going to give them one little bump. And our stator is on. And now on the other side, I've got the voltage regulator. It grounds itself to the heat shield on here. Just got this 3 8 bolt that goes on. I've got to snug that up. But then we can just connect our blacks to yellow. And then we just have the red wire that comes out. And that is going to go to the red wire in our harness. And that is pretty much it. It's easy peasy. Let me snug up this 3 8 bolt. Make sure we are solid there. And then we'll get that flywheel mounted. Alright, well I've got that snug down. We are going to go ahead and put the flywheel back on. So my keyway is back here at the moment. I'm just going to go ahead and get this into place. Got my key. I'm gonna go ahead and get that started in there. Just 
Sometimes these things are a little difficult to get in. There it goes. Dropped right into place. And then we've got our washer. This is actually a concave or convex washer. It kind of domes upward. You want it to be in the up position. I did put some anti-seize on this last time because I knew that we would probably be taking it back off. And that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead and just get that tightened up with the impact. And we're going to see if we got some charging going on here. We are sitting pretty good. I was about 13.8 at one point, um, right up to about 14 over that. You don't want to go over that where you're going to be overcharging, but we look pretty solid here. I guess our next order of business is let me get this stuff cleaned up and we're going to go ahead and drop the mowing deck off from here and take a look as to see what's going on with that. All right, well, taking a look at this, it's got to be probably one of the easiest mowing decks I've seen to take off. We just have this spring loaded tab on this side. I've got to take the weight off from it, um, but we've got that one. We've just got the front hanger, and it just slides right back. And then on the other side, we just have another pull tab, and then dropping the belt off the PTO, which I've already done prior to this to make sure that uh, the deck did not try to engage on us. Um, so let me get that stuff pulled, and then I'm going to back the machine out, and we'll get started on this deck. Right, and I got this mowing deck off. Like I said, it was just those two pins, that front mount, and then slipping the belt off. Quite possibly the easiest mowing deck I've ever taken off a lawnmower. I was just test fitting the idler pulley. Uh, I bought this at Tractor Supply. This was that one that we needed. It's a four and a half inch. I did not feel like waiting on the part to come in or spending $40 on it. So I went to Tractor Supply and they had what I needed. Now, uh, it was this spindle down here that had a bad lower bearing, but they were all a bit noisy and I figured we could just go through and do all the bearings on here. On the last video we checked, I got the part number off from uh, the bearing race on these, or the seal, and I got a pack of 10, I'll show y'all, off from Amazon. They are a 6204-2RS and because I do so many mowers, I figured a 10 pack would be great because we're going to use six on this one and I will have some spares left over. So, uh, I had already taken the pulley off from here, but to drop this spindle out, I just wanted to get the nut flush on here. I've got my sledge and I'm actually bottoming out on the ground right now. It's loose, so we should be able to just pick up on the mowing deck and that will slide right on out. All right, old spindle is out. I guess these ones have a, it's like a little spacer that goes between the, the bearing in here. But you guys can see, like I was talking about in the other video, I think these are the, these are the copperhead blades, and these look to be brand new, other than having surface rust. So, Basically what I'm going to do is go down in here and start tapping this with this little punch here. Uh, I will work my way around the bearing until it comes out. Hopefully it shouldn't be too seized in the, the housing. But I will just work around it until it pops out the bottom. got that pop loose there are two spacers that go inside basically you've got 
your spindle comes up, goes to the bearing, two spacers, and then we have our top bearing. And that is pretty much about it. I am basically just gonna be doing the same procedure on all of these spindles, then I will flip it over and I'll pop the tops out and I'll show you guys once I get all of these replaced. But that's pretty much it. And uh, you basically have a new spindle at that point. All right, and instead of getting to all the other ones yet, I just wanted to show y'all I did both bearings on this. You can see that new blue bearing in there, or both of those bearings. I don't have it all the way tight, but absolutely no noise. That thing is silent and buttery smooth. So for, what, a few bucks and new bearings, we basically have new spindles on here, and this thing is ready to rock i'm gonna finish up with the rest of these spindles then we'll get that pulley tightened up we'll take a look on here see if there's any stress cracks or anything else going on with it and then we should be able to remount this and get everything tested out i will be doing some paint on here i bought some at the store to try to color match but yeah let me finish this up and we'll see if we can finally get this mower cutting all right next day i got all of the bearings changed out, did not take too long. The only part that was a little difficult was the one that had the bad bearing. Uh, I just kind of had to punch the race out and it was just a little difficult to get a hold of. I just used a punch and caught the edge. Now I did go ahead and grease up the idlers. We've got three on here. Uh, I just went with a grease needle underneath the seal here, made sure those had grease. And then we have our new one. Also, there is a grease fitting right here uh, this is the tensioner arm and so it kind of rides back and forth a lot uh, so everything should be greased and ready to go got everything tight so I'm gonna pull the mower out I'm gonna get the uh, deck back mounted and we're gonna test this thing out all right well I got that back on I'd say the hardest part I guess was just getting the belt routed and stretched back over the pulley because that tension spring on here has definitely got a good amount of tension on it. The deck to me does not look level. It looks like this side is sitting quite a bit higher, but we'll get to all that. We're just going to test this out. Uh, it does have the diagram on this one just to show, but I've got everything routed and on there. I did go ahead and just do a full rotation by hand just to make sure that there's no twists in the belt or anything like that and everything is going smooth but i'll crank it up um i'll just pull up on the hill a little bit and hopefully we're gonna have some mowing action so Be detailing it and getting this thing all tidied up. 
All right, well, we've got a nice soupy wet day out here today, and I uh, figured no better time than to try to get some painting done. For the mowing deck, I tried to find something at the store which was the closest match because this is a, a different color than I'm used to. It's a red metallic. Uh, I found this Ford color, which is Toreador Red Metallic Flake, and then we've got some Rust-Oleum 2X Clear. So. We are going to be trying that out. I've got a new grinding disc I'm going to show you guys as well, which hopefully will help out. Enough talking. Let's get to it. I'm going to throw you all on the time lapse, and we'll get this mower deck off real quick, and then we'll get going on grinding, prepping, and painting. So I picked up this polycarbide abrasive wheel the other day for the angle grinder, and it says that it is good for... Oh, where the heck did it say it? Removes rust paint and flaking metal. So we've got a little bit of uh, everything. Uh, basically what I want to try to do is just clean up these edges where they're starting to peel and get that done all the way around. We don't have anything crazy going on as far as uh, any holes in the mowing deck or anything like that. We're just cleaning it up and getting this prep for paint. So I will probably just set y'all on the time lapse again and just show you guys grinding a little bit of this and then we'll get this thing all prepped. I tried to use the new disc, but apparently that's the wrong size for my angle grinder. So, uh, note to self, buy the right size. And then, as soon as I got done, I realized I had no primer, so I had to go to Tractor Supply. It's only uh, $9.50 now for one can of primer. But I got two cans of primer. That way I got some for other projects. And I did mask off these stickers on here, so I think we are pretty well prepped. Uh, I'm just going to wipe everything down and then throw some primer on. I'll show you guys once I got that on. And then we're going to throw on that red base coat. Probably do two coats of that. And then one or two coats of the clear. And this thing ought to be looking pretty darn good. So, Alright, just got the primer laid down. It's going to take a little bit to let that dry. I'm going to try to speed up the process with the heat gun a little bit. But I think we've got everything pretty well touched up on here. And I'll show you guys when I get done with the two coats of that red base all right and i was only able to lay down one coat all the way around this deck with that can just because it's so small and that thing was like 14 bucks uh, but we're gonna go ahead and hit it with this clear and i'll show you guys actually we'll go ahead and do a little bit right on camera hopefully this is where the magic happens can see it's gonna have a nice metallic flake in there but let me get this knocked out and then I'll show you guys what it looks like after we get uh, probably two coats of clear on here all right well it has been a couple of days since I showed you guys working on this mowing deck uh, I think I ended up with three coats of clear on here I was a little disappointed with the finish of the clear coat but it is what it is uh, it just didn't come out as glossy as I had hoped. Uh, I did touch up the uh, spindle covers as well. I just buffed those and threw a couple coats of clear on them. But I've got the machine outside. I've got the mowing deck in position. I'm going to go ahead and just get this in and get it remounted up. And then we can just move on from there. I think we're pretty close to having this thing finished and I'm super excited. All right. And we got the mowing deck mounted up on here spindle covers on everything is looking good uh one of the things i did i didn't even show you guys um this deck was on level uh, this side was actually sitting lower than the other side now as far as side to side movement there is only uh, one side that you can adjust on here so basically you just need to match this side to the other in order to do that you have a uh, adjustment right here just take this half inch loosen up the center bolt and then that larger 
uh, nut right there. You can turn one way or the other and see razor lower. Uh, so I did get that all matched up. We are totally level. Uh, tires are aired up. It's on level ground. Everything looks good. There was a couple things I did off camera the other day uh, that I didn't mention either. Um, there was some scuffs and it didn't look very good right here in this portion. I had some grip tape so I went ahead and cut this out and made that look as good as I could. That way the foot pad area looks nice. Everything is looking pretty good on here. The uh, main oil leak culprit on here was the uh, the drain hose that they installed uh, the worm clamp that is up against uh, the fitting that's in the block was loose I went ahead and tightened that up I have ran this for a little while and I didn't notice anything else the hydros look good so I think we are in the clear there I threw a new fuel filter in and that is all good tossed in another used battery which still doesn't have enough cold cranking amps to uh, turn over this big engine so we'll hit it with a jumper pack um yeah this thing is coming out awesome so we are going to pull this thing outside and finally i will reveal to you guys when we see it out in the sun everything looks good super excited this came out really nice i think for uh you know as, as old of a machine as this is and um I also wanted to give you guys a big thanks uh, as far as everyone coming to the channel and checking it out. We got a lot of new projects. The channel has been growing and I greatly appreciate it. I love reading your guys' comments. I try to respond back as quickly as I can and to everybody. And uh, if you do like this kind of content, think about hitting that subscribe, thumbs up, and leaving me a comment. Yeah, so let's jump to it. I'm going to get this thing cranked up. We're going to pull it out. I'll show you guys how everything looks on it and we're going get, to get to cutting with it. All right, well, this is it. Turned out pretty darn good, I'd say. Uh, we had quite a bit of hard work put into this. It was just a lot of little things that needed to be fixed. But overall, this turned out really nice. I think that paint on the mowing deck matched up pretty decent. I wish that the clear coat would have been a little better, but uh, the paint on the machine, all the original buffed out and looks good. Those plastics cleaned up nice. And obviously the most important thing is how it's going to run and cut. Uh, this twin cylinder sounds good, healthy. Everything is good to go on it. Our charging system's working. I mean, everything should perform really well on this mower for quite some time. The only thing we got left really is to just put in a new battery and do some testing with it. I also need to get some hardware uh, to mount up the shroud. I haven't done that yet but we are gonna test everything out. So let me get y'all set up on the tripod and we're gonna to get to cutting. this thing is smooth as butter honestly everything works really nice on here the controls work the steering is super smooth i have gone through greased everything made sure that basically everything on here is totally ready to go i don't know let me know what you guys think in your area this mower might sell for 
I know it's a little bit older machine, but it has been totally gone through and is in really good shape, low hour, and it looks extremely well taken care of. So I'm pumped up. And also we are gonna be doing the teardown on that Kawasaki V-Twin. A lot of people were interested in that, so that will be coming up next. And hopefully it's not too bad and we can rebuild it. I'd love to make a video on that as well. And we've got a ton of other projects, so. I really appreciate y'all stopping by and watching part two of our $100 zero turn. And we will keep pumping out the content and uh, can't wait to hear from you guys. So on that note, let freedom ring, let those small engines sing. I'll see you all next time.